The objective today is to explain what the Intel manual says about SIMD state management instructions. So I did my best to find a nice little picture here to try to simplify what SIMD is. S for single, I for instruction, M and D for multiple data. So single instruction, multiple data. Now Intel says two state management instructions were introduced in the IA32 architecture with the Pentium 2 processor. First thing that pops up when I Google that is May 7th, 1997. So that gives us a little bit of a time frame there. So that first instruction, FX save, uh, that stands for save the x87 FPU and SIMD state. So it looks like the X here is what's implying the whole SIMD-ness of the instruction. If we scroll up, we've seen an instruction like this before right here with F save and that simply says save FPU state after checking air conditions. If we put an N after the F it won't check for those air conditions. And if you watched that last video I'm sure you were tired of hearing me say air conditions. At the time of this recording it's uh, summer where I'm at and I wish I had air conditioning. But to get back on track, that next instruction is just real straightforward. FX are store, so restore the x87 FPU and SIMD state. Now initially, these instructions operated only on the x87 and MMX registers to perform a fast save and restore. With the introduction of SSE extensions in the Pentium 3 processor family, these instructions were expanded to also save and restore the state of the XMM and MX CSR registers. So I have a really silly way of remembering this. First there was the MMX registers, which M&Ms are good, we all like eating M&Ms I assume. But what's even better, what comes after, right, to improve upon something, when you have extra M&Ms or extra large M&Ms, uh, that makes sense. But in Intel's craziness, what they will then do next is have YMM and then, and then ZMM registers. So at that point, we're just going in alphabetical order now. All right, so the Intel 64 architecture also supports these instructions. With Intel's history of backward compatibility, I think there was just no doubt in anyone's mind that the, uh, those instructions would be supported by the uh, 64 architecture as well. So our first question is, what new registers came on the scene with the SSE extensions? The answer is the XMM and, MM and MX CSR. And I think it might be redundant to say SSE extensions because SSE, the E, already stands for extensions. Right, there we are right there, streaming SIMD extensions. That's similar to DNS for me. I, for years, thought DNS, saying DNS server was redundant, but no, the S is actually for system in that particular acronym. So therefore, it's not really redundant to say DNS server. Well, let's learn more about these MMX instructions. The originals, the OGs. So four extensions have been introduced in the IA32 architecture to permit IA32 processors to perform single instruction multiple data operations. These extensions include the MMX technology, SSE extensions, SSE2 extensions, SSE3 extensions, and for a discussion that puts SIMD instructions in their historical context, you could see section 2.2.7 uh, SIMD instructions. So the question is, what four extensions were added that involved SIMD instructions? And the answer, MMX Tech, SSE, SSE2, and SSE3. Now, MMX instructions operate on packed byte, word, double word, or quad word integer operands contained in memory. Or these operands can be in the MMX registers and or they can be in general purpose registers. Now for more detail on these instructions, we'll go to chapter 9 for that. MMX instructions can only be executed on Intel 64 and IA32 processors that support that particular type of technology, MMX technology. To know whether your processor supports it, you could use the SPUID instruction. And matter of fact, in the last video, I told you I had a Stack Overflow answer that kind of detailed how you would go about using that CPU ID instruction to uh, get a lot of different types of information. 
But to simplify it here, if you go to this link, Felix Clouter, and let me uh, find on the page uh, the word features. Here we go. So after you put uh, this value, a 1, into EAX, you know, when CPU ID executes that, um, the data you get back will let you know which of these features, this long um, table of features, uh, what your processor supports. So this is everything from AVX instruction extensions to perfmon and debug capability. It would take a long time to uh, break apart this table, but that's the gist of what they're talking about right here. So I asked the question, how do you know if your processor supports any of these extensions? You'll know by using the CPU ID instruction. Well, to wrap up the introduction here, it says MMX instructions are divided into the following subgroups, just like with x87 and x86 subgroups. We begin with a data transfer section, um, but this one has a conversion section. We got packed arithmetic, comparison, that's no surprise, logical, neither is that. And our last one is state management instructions. And similar to before, I'm going to try to just blow through these so I don't have to read them out to you. Now when we're talking about data transfer, just know we're talking about moving things between MMX registers and between MMX registers and memory. So they only have two here, move D as in double word and move Q for quad word. Now we got a bunch of conversion instructions. I'll just give you one example. You could uh, pack words into bytes with, a sign, with signed saturation. So you're gonna see a keyword right here, saturation. It keeps popping up. So the question, what is saturation a reference to when talking about MMX conversion instructions? Now we have a bunch of unpack instructions. Down here, once we get to the MMX packed arithmetic instructions, there's a bunch of ads, seven to be exact. And then we have seven uh, instructions all about subtracting. And there's three at the end regarding multiplying. Again, these are MMX arithmetic instructions. For comparison ones, those are straightforward as well. We can compare backed, we can compare packed bytes for equal. We can compare packed words for equal. All right, you're going to see the pattern already beginning right here. For those who are watching, you can see we have four bitwise logical instructions. The shift and rotate ones, I'm sure you'll want examples of these. At this time, Intel's not um, providing any. And then our final one for the video, this is the MMX state management instructions, except I only see one. Um, it says the EMMS instruction clears the MMX state from the MMX registers. So when you type in EMMS, that just is an empty MMX state. Reminds me of the CLS command in Linux. I just don't know why this guy got his very own little section down here at the end. So just because I don't want to finish with four questions, I asked one more for the road. What are some examples of shift and rotate instructions and how do they work? So there you go. There's a bunch of information about MMX and next time we'll go ahead and start talking about the SSE instructions.